reaction now to the entire shipping industry. Uh, the Red Sea attacks continue to disrupt global trade. Dry bulk freight rates are also fluctuating due to the volatile trading activity in the month of March. How will the freight rates look in FI25 and what will be the impact of the Baltimore bridge collapse uh, on trading volumes? Has it already impacted? Um, to talk about the situation in the water, G. Shivakumar, EDN CFO of GE Shipping is with us now. Uh, you know, Mr. Shivakumar, you know, first the Red Sea attacks, now the Baltimore bridge collapse, and that's quite significant, right? It is, Baltimore is, I think, U.S.'s 17th largest port. So there would have been some impact. Just talk to us about how the situation has been in the month of March. Yeah, uh, good morning, and thanks for having me. Uh, yes, Baltimore is a fairly important port. From our point of view, uh, this unfortunate uh, accident uh, it affects potentially dry bulk volumes because it was a coal export uh, uh, hub. Uh, so we need to see how that gets substituted, whether the coal gets rerouted through other uh, ports on the U.S. East Coast. Uh, it's, again, because it just happened a day and a half ago, it's too early to tell. Uh, but it, it's, it accounts for about 20, 25 million tons per annum of coal exports. Uh, so that's, uh, that's one potential uh, impact it could have on dry bulk. It is not significant for tankers, which is, of course, the majority of our fleet. Uh, so we'll need to wait and watch what happens to, uh, with regard to coal volumes. Again, coal can be substituted from other uh, exporting areas. So we don't know how the trade uh, uh, trade patterns will work out now for this 25 million tons. No, absolutely. This was a very, very sad incident. But I think the world's acknowledged the role of the All Indian crew, uh, you know, on board that ship because they gave that Mayday warning and it really saved uh, more lives. Otherwise, it could have been even more catastrophic. <clears throat> Sir, just to sort of uh, put this out of the way. So uh, as you said that... Uh, this shouldn't impact too much of tanker movement. But in general, uh, you know, do you operate in that particular region, that part of the world? And uh, while, you know, uh, coal is the, the, you know, the aspect of trade that perhaps will directly have an impact, but generally in terms of restrictions, movement, uh, perhaps, you know, any kind of spillover effect in terms of uh, insurance rates, anything else, any other spillovers uh, that we should be aware of with respect to uh, Indian flag carriers? Um not necessarily for Indian flag carriers specifically. Yeah, the impact on insurance will be known over a period of time. There are already reports about it being a large claim. So it's too early to tell. Again, very early to tell. Uh, maybe it'll have an impact. Maybe it won't depend on the nature of the claims which come up. We have traded in the past and we are in what is called tram shipping. So our ships go all over the world uh, and uh, we operate uh, you know, so many ships internationally. 80% of our revenue comes from international customers. So we have been to Baltimore. We have loaded coal from Baltimore as well in the recent past, that's in the last year or so. Uh, we do uh, go to these ports all across the world. Uh, we have been a long, long time ago, I think we did a crude cargo into Baltimore, but I'm not 100% sure. So we do go there again, but that doesn't give us any special insights into what could happen there really. Okay, all right. Hi, Mr. Shivakumar. Appreciate you joining in here on CNBC TV 18. It's always good to, to hear your insights. Give us a sense about rates. How have rates moved, say, in the last few months, and how do you expect things to pan out? If you could give us an average of quarter three, say, and what is the spot rates? Yeah, good morning, Nigel. The uh, spot rates for quarter four have been, on tankers, have been, in general, a little higher than in Q3, uh, especially for the product tankers. Uh, some of the red sea disruption also uh, pushed rates up. Uh, so basically, people avoiding the red sea route, which is via the Suez Canal, uh, and the main route which was affected for product tankers is from either the Middle East or from west uh, west coast of India to Europe, uh, carrying refined products. And a lot of those ships routed around the Cape of Good Hope. Uh, and therefore, that is a longer run and resulted in a tighter market. So, in general, rates were better than they were in Q3 for tankers. Dry bulk also saw some recovery. While Cape sizes had a very strong December, uh, we saw again a reasonably strong Jan Feb, uh, and about the same uh, as Q3, but the smaller bulk areas also have done better than they were in Q3. 
So all in all, I think it's been a slightly better quarter in terms of realizations, which is the dollars per day realizations for our ships. Thank you, three. And what about volumes and what can you guide, uh, Mr. Shivakumar, for FI25? What's your expectation in terms of freight rates and volumes? So we don't have a forecast for freight rates. We expect markets to remain tight. Uh, mm -hmm. The way it's panning out is that there's very little new capacity coming into the market, especially for crude tankers. There is some capacity coming in for product tankers. This is, I'm talking about world market capacity. That's world supply, which means that the market should remain fairly tight and therefore keep rates at uh, pretty healthy levels. Uh, dry bulk also, we see that there are significant cargoes. There is cargo growth in dry bulk. Therefore, we should be able to see a reasonably firm market through next financial year. Again, you'll have weak quarters and very high quarters also in between. In general, the trend is firm for the next year. Mm. In Shibu our case, Kumar. we don't really have much volume growth. We have one ship which is joining the fleet in uh, next month. But apart from that, we don't have much volume growth. Okay, so you have one addition to the fleet. And right now, you would be uh, operating at what level of your capacity? I mean, 100% or near 100%? So we are at 100% capacity. Ships, okay. apart from the time that they have to go into dry dock, uh, are employed all the time. It's a strong market. Ships are employed uh, all the time. Okay. Oh, you mentioned that, obviously, uh, you know, freight rates have increased on the tanker side and the dry bulk side. So give us a you know ballpark range. Ever since the Red Sea issue bro broke out, which was at some point in uh, third quarter, I don't remember a specific month now, but since then, what has been the increase in rates? So we had, uh, yeah, so it started sometime in around mid-December, uh, and it's escalating and it de-escalates from time to time. Uh, basically, transits through the Suez Canal have dropped by about 30 to 40 percent uh, based on the different types of ships uh, that are going through. Uh, rates went up. So rates spiked initially in January for product tankers, for larger product tankers. But then they came off also. So some of these are, you know, uh, quick uh, reactions and then they uh, they come off. So I think uh, on average, two to three thousand dollars a day better uh, for tankers versus the previous quarter. And that's a very rough estimate. Really. OK, all right, Mr. Shiva Kumar, always good talking to you. Thanks so much for joining in and giving us all those details. We look forward to having a chat with you actually after your quarter four numbers then maybe, in fact, we could get a sense about how FY25 is shaping up.